percent. So a lot to discuss throughout this hour. Let's kick it off and get the big picture. Amit Schneider is with us, Chief Strategist at MarketGage.com. Good afternoon to you. Do you think there's a lot of opportunities in this market? I think you have to be a little bit more careful now. I'm listening to you on the recap. It sounds so wonderful, except for the fact that the one area that I'm watching more closely than anything else is the consumer area. And I like to look at XRT, Nicole, because that is a really good ETF with a blend of staples and consumer discretionaries. And A, it's red. And B, what's really thrilling about it is if you go back to the end of January, beginning of February of this year to now, 10 months, it's been in a $10 range between 70 and 80. And it's trading at 75 right now. So what does that tell you? Is that if we really want to see this market continue or the economy reflect what's happening in the growth stocks in the S&P, we have to see the consumers stay in the game. And right now, smack dab in the middle, there's uncertainty. And that would give me a little bit of caution before piling in at these levels. I see, I see. We saw a couple of downgrades today. Canada Goose, VFC Corp, for example. Uh, you know, there are concerns from some companies about the consumer. We've heard that, no doubt. Um, do you think we'll see market highs again? I mean, today we're looking at highs once again. And there, we've had a lot of folks come in and say, buy the dip. Is that your mentality? Well, it depends on what you're looking at. I think you have to step back a little bit right now and say, okay, what's going to happen? We have an election coming up. So it's really hard to tell how much more volatility, which, by the way, hasn't come down very much considering we have new all-time highs in the S&P today. So that's telling you that the market is still bracing itself for a level of volatility based on so many factors. I mean, besides the election, obviously, we still have other things going on. So I, this is where I like to go back and say, okay, what's going to happen in 2025, regardless of who wins? So there are certain things that we're seeing reflected today. Both candidates are very, at least positive in their campaigning about Bitcoin. So that has presented a lot of opportunities there. And if we get through the highs that we've had this year, which is 74,000, that could be really interesting and all the different stocks that go along with that besides the ETFs. They're also both somewhat bullish in cannabis. You want to talk about something that's been totally beat up? That would be MSOS. It's sitting there at around $7. Depending on what could happen in 2025, that could be an opportunity. Obviously, defense is something that both candidates will feel very strongly about, given especially geopolitical situation. So that's that in the U.S. But I have to tell you, yes, we're on new all-time highs, but we have to see the Russell 2000 participate. Both candidates have talked about domestic production increases. We haven't seen it in the numbers yet. Again, the retail is so important to me. But the good news is right. transportation is doing good. The regional banks are doing okay. So we'll see. Okay. I, think, I think it's patience yeah. here. we got to go through this a little bit. Um, Let's talk about retailers. You do have names like Target and Elf Beauty on your list. Why are those retailers probably maybe a good position to hold in a portfolio? Two different reasons. Okay, so I know you and I have talked about that vanity trade. I think probably the most exciting thing that I'm watching unfold more and more is the implication of the diet drugs. And so that's why there's all these different stocks that I've had an eye on, Ulta Beauty being one, Elf being another, and then in the drug area, Eli Lilly and Avi and Novo Nordisk. And they're all mixed up in terms of where they are. But Elf had a dramatic drop from 220 down to 100. We got our clients in at 105. It's trading at around 116 right now. Do I think it's going to go flying back up to new all-time highs any time now? No. But I do think that it has a lot of benefit because it's a global company that really includes all complexions. I think that's a plus. In terms of Target, that's more staple shopping. We've got seasonals coming up with holidays. I like where it's sitting in a chart. It's not at all-time highs, but it's not beat up either. So if it can just continue in some level of consolidation over, let's say, I think 160 is the price. I'm looking at it for to get through. It's trading right under 159. That's an opportunity. So you kind of really be selective. Mm -hmm. You also like gold and silver. I mean, we saw gold, for example, 2,700 troy ounce and um, right now 2,665. 
Tell me how you would go, because gold and silver are on your radar. You do like them, maybe as a safe haven. You tell us, and how, where do you think gold is headed? Well, I like gold for three years now because you can see that gold. What's so interesting about gold, it's like a mirror. If you hold up a mirror and you don't want to see the cracks, <laughs> they're there. And that's what gold is really reflecting, as you mentioned, flight to safety. But what's interesting to me about gold versus silver is silver has really basically been stagnating between low as $28 uh, up to about $32 or $33 an ounce. And when silver starts to outperform gold, which it's done in little pockets, and if it does in any kind of sustained way, and we start to see silver get past that $33 mark, I think it's telling you a couple of things. And one is that inflation may not necessarily be as behaving as much as the Fed would like you to believe, number one. And number two is that could have an impact to what the Fed will do going forward, not so aggressive uh, in terms of lowering rates, and that should impact the whole market. And again, let's go back to the consumer. So it's all connected. You got to watch yeah. gold, silver, and you got to watch yeah. the consumer. And that's going to tell you what's up. Yeah. Yeah. What about Zoom video? That was an interesting one. And Chewy. Zoom and Chewy. Two cool <laughs> names. Interesting. Pandemic names, too. Exactly. Well, we're not exactly in a pandemic anymore, thank goodness. But Chewy is actually an interesting name because it's sort of a recession-proof type of situation. So if you wanted to think safety, if the situation starts to change where we go from yay, soft landing, to wait, maybe that SOM rule really does hit, and we start to see more recession, again, going back to the consumer, Chewy could be a stock that could actually outperform. So it's been trading between 28, 31. You know, I love stocks that I'm interested in that consolidate in a range, because once they break out, that could be an interesting. So we're watching that. We're not in it. The same thing with Zoom. I've been seeing more and more information. First of all, the, the earnings are supposed to be not too bad, and even though it's down today. Two is there's a lot of companies like Microsoft who are basically giving up on the go back to office thing. Zoom has competition, but they're starting to talk AI as well, and we know what that can do to a company once AI gets introduced, AI being used really more for data collection and keeping track of schedules and things like that for you. So I wouldn't necessarily, again, be buying this right. dip, but I'd wait. Yeah, I saw you had Lucid on there and SL Green. You had a slew of names, but your concern is that as rates come down, the economy could slow, and you don't necessarily love that picture. Okay, Mish, we'll talk again soon. Mish Schneider, MarketGage.com. Thank you for being with us.